What did you say your name was again? I didn't. No, I guess you didn't at that, did you? Clint Eastwood, one of the most respected public figures, is celebrated for his dashing good looks and an unshakable confidence that some have come to fear. However, there are bound to be a few thorns in the path to stardom, where there's fame and glory. In this video, we'll uncover some of the celebrities who have crossed swords with this iconic star. Brace up, because some of these Hollywood heavyweights that breed animosity towards the old legend will shock you. Join us as we delve into the stories of 13 celebrities who absolutely hate Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood and his rise to fame. To understand the negative sentiments some people have toward Clint Eastwood, let's start by discussing who he is and his profound significance in the realm of entertainment. Go ahead, make my day is an iconic line that might be one of the first things that come to mind when you think of Clint Eastwood. His journey in the world of cinema began way back in the early 1950s and continues to this day. With an impressive collection of five Academy Awards and an abundance of other accolades, Clint Eastwood stands as a colossal figure in Hollywood. He's been a fixture on the silver screen for decades, leaving an everlasting mark. Eastwood's career has been synonymous with rugged masculine roles. He's the classic loner, a character that has captured the hearts of countless admirers, particularly women who have swooned over his cowboyish charm. Did he fire six shots or only five? But interestingly, not everyone has embraced him with open arms. Some have harbored a simmering resentment, stemming from a variety of reasons. Jealousy has, at times, cast a shadow over Eastwood's remarkable success. His ascent to the pinnacle of Hollywood has not been without its fair share of detractors who couldn't help but envy his achievements. This envy, however, is just one facet of the mysterious dislike surrounding him. Eastwood's outspoken nature and stances on certain issues have also drawn their share of criticism. He's never been one to shy away from expressing his point of view, even when it didn't align with the prevailing sentiments. This outspokenness, while earning him admirers, has simultaneously fueled hatred from those who disagreed with his perspective. Now let's check out 13 of these celebrities who absolutely hate Clint Eastwood. Number 13. John Wayne Before Clint Eastwood rode onto the Western film scene, there was another towering figure in the genre, John Wayne, known as the Duke. Wayne was the ultimate Hollywood star, famous for his portrayal of the famous good guy who always rode in to save the day, the cowboy hero. However, when Clint Eastwood emerged, he brought a shift in the way cowboys were depicted on the silver screen. He carved his niche by portraying rugged cowboys as loners, a style that didn't sit well with John Wayne. The turning point in their uneasy relationship came with the release of High Plains Drifter in 1973 a dark and gritty Western film that Eastwood both starred in and directed. It was a significant departure from the classic Western narratives, and John Wayne didn't receive it properly. After the movie's release, Clint Eastwood, ever the audacious one, took it upon himself to reach out to the Duke with a proposal to work together on a Western film. This was a proposition that many would have leaped at, but John Wayne's response was far from enthusiastic. He fired back an angry letter, vehemently denouncing the movie for its excessive violence and its portrayal of the Old West as a place of moral ambiguity and revisionism. Clint Eastwood responded to this stinging remark with a shrug, dismissing the sentiments of the greatest Western star of all time. It was a moment of bold defiance, and it sealed their fate as non-collaborators in the world of Western cinema. Had John Wayne not held such antipathy towards Eastwood's evolving style, perhaps we might have witnessed the convergence of these two giants in a Western masterpiece. In the 1970s, they were presented with a script titled The Hostels, which offered the potential for their shared presence on screen. Clint Eastwood was intrigued by the idea, but John Wayne was not. His sour remarks didn't impede Clint's flourishing career as an actor and director, though. In fact, Clint Eastwood went on to establish his own production company, Malpaso, and produced a plethora of outstanding films. The enduring tension between Wayne and Eastwood persisted until John Wayne's passing in 1979. Their differences in cinematic approach, values, and interpretation of the Western genre remained unresolved, leaving us to ponder what might have been if these two titans had ever united on the silver screen. Number 12. Sandra Locke 
Sandra Locke and Clint Eastwood used to be in a romantic relationship that was a roller coaster of emotions and professional entanglement. Back in the 1970s and 80s, they were inseparable for nearly a decade, even though Sandra Locke remained legally married to another person. It was a relationship that had all the makings of a Hollywood drama. As the story goes, things took a turn for the worse when Clint Eastwood made a shocking move. Upon discovering that Sandra Locke was venturing into directing and acting in films outside his purview, he locked her out of their shared home. It was a dramatic twist that raised eyebrows and created a rift between them. Sandra Locke was undeniably beautiful and highly talented, but her association with Clint Eastwood cast a long shadow over her professional career. They appeared together in several films, and one of the most memorable was The Outlaw Josie Wales in 1976. It marked the beginning of a series of six films that they would co-star in. In an interview, Clint Eastwood even proclaimed it as one of his favorite films. However, their on-screen chemistry was eclipsed by the drama unfolding behind the scenes. The situation escalated when Sandra Locke filed a lawsuit against Clint Eastwood, seeking palimony, a term denoting financial support similar to alimony but in non-marital relationships. Ultimately, they settled their dispute outside the courtroom, but the damage had been done and the scars ran deep. Clint Eastwood, with his influence in the industry, managed to secure a film contract for Sandra Locke with Warner Brothers, raising hopes that her career might get back on track. However, it was a mere formality, as more than 30 of her proposed projects were unceremoniously rejected. The contract turned out to be little more than a piece of paper, and Warner Brothers showed no intention of letting her make films. This turn of events led to a second lawsuit, with Sandra Locke suing Clint Eastwood for fraud. Once again, they settled matters outside the courtroom, but by this point, any hope of reconciliation had evaporated. The saga of Sandra Locke and Clint Eastwood remains a chapter in Hollywood history filled with both admiration and acrimony. Their tumultuous relationship finally left Sandra Locke to grapple with a professional legacy that was, in many ways, shaped by the complexities of her personal life. Number 11. Tom Hanks In more recent times, a unique cinematic partnership unfolded between the two Hollywood heavyweights, Tom Hanks and Clint Eastwood. Their collaboration emerged in the 2016 film Sully, a poignant tale based on the real-life heroics of pilot Chesley Sullenberger. It marked the first occasion when these two icons joined forces, and the experience was far from conventional. Tom Hanks, renowned for his roles in beloved films like Forrest Gump and as the voice of Woody in Toy Story, offered a candid glimpse into the making of Sully. He revealed that Clint Eastwood, the revered actor and director, seemed to channel his inner cowboy rather than donning the typical director's hat. On set, Eastwood exhibited a demeanor akin to rounding up horses, and at times, his approach appeared to be rather unyielding. Hanks, an actor celebrated for his amiable nature, found himself grappling with the stern side of Eastwood's directorial style. He confessed to a visible discomfort at being on the receiving end of Clint Eastwood's disapproving glare during the filmmaking process. This was a dynamic that contrasted sharply with Hanks's usual experiences in the industry. The film Sully itself was a riveting portrayal of the real-life pilot Chesley Sullenberger, who achieved an extraordinary feat by safely landing a plane on the Hudson River after a bird strike. Yet, the process of bringing this story to life was not without its challenges. Tom Hanks, in particular, felt a sense of frustration with Eastwood's directorial approach. His penchant for using natural light and insisting on shooting scenes in chronological order, rather than adhering to the more common methods, proved to be a source of contention. Hanks, like many actors, was accustomed to a different style of filmmaking. This unconventional approach, although favored by Eastwood, deviated from the norms that actors often rely on. While the end result, Sully, received applause for its gripping portrayal of a remarkable real-life event, the behind-the-scenes dynamic between Tom Hanks and Clint Eastwood offered a fascinating glimpse into the intricacies of Hollywood collaboration. The clash of their creative sensibilities, though challenging, brought forth a memorable chapter in the world of cinema. This is the captain. Brace for impact. Number 10. Leonardo DiCaprio Clint Eastwood's reputation in Hollywood has, on occasions, led some of the industry's finest to make resolute declarations that they'd never collaborate with him again. One such instance involved the esteemed Leonardo DiCaprio, renowned for his iconic roles in films like Titanic 
and The Revenant. DiCaprio ventured into uncharted territory in 2011 when he teamed up with Clint Eastwood for the biographical drama J. Edgar. In this cinematic endeavor, DiCaprio took on the formidable role of J. Edgar Hoover, the influential director of the FBI. As the project unfolded, it became apparent that tensions were simmering beneath the surface, ultimately reaching a boiling point. With all due respect, miss, I'm not the one hanging off the back of a ship. One particularly contentious moment occurred when Leonardo DiCaprio requested a retake of a scene, a common practice in the film industry to achieve the desired performance. And we, we wanted to go into this journey, and I think Alejandro had it stuck in his mind. He couldn't really articulate, but he said... However, Clint Eastwood, known for his preference for efficiency and economy on set, took a different approach. Instead of granting DiCaprio's request, he declared the day's shooting as complete and walked away from the set in a characteristically calm manner. The clash of creative visions became increasingly evident. DiCaprio found himself at odds with Eastwood's directorial methodology, which often entailed capturing only a single take per scene, denying the customary retakes and rehearsals. For a dedicated actor like DiCaprio, who thrives on perfection and exploration of his roles, this approach was a source of frustration. The actor, who had achieved acclaim for his ability to delve deep into his characters, felt that his performance was compromised by this streamlined method. He believed that Eastwood wasn't receptive to his input and suggestions, leading to a profound disconnect between actor and director. In response to these creative conflicts, DiCaprio made a consequential decision. He not only withdrew from a subsequent project with Clint Eastwood, but also adamantly declared that he would never again collaborate with the veteran director. This episode serves as a testament to the complexities of the creative process in Hollywood, where the collision of artistic sensibilities can sometimes lead to parting ways. Number 9. Sean Penn The world of Hollywood witnessed another dramatic clash, this time involving the Oscar-winning actor Sean Penn, celebrated for his roles in films like Mystic River and Milk. The collision of creative forces occurred on the set of Milk, a biographical drama where Sean Penn portrayed the iconic gay rights activist and politician Harvey Milk. The film was helmed by none other than Clint Eastwood, who wore the director's hat. As the production unfolded, it became evident that Sean Penn and Clint Eastwood had significant differences in their approach to filmmaking. Penn, known for his commitment to the craft and his dedication to his roles, found himself at odds with Eastwood's methodology. The crux of the discord lay in Eastwood's approach, which included a reluctance to offer detailed guidance and his preference for capturing a scene in a single take without entertaining the prospect of retakes, as already mentioned. Penn was frustrated by Eastwood's approach. He felt that the director's method was causing undue haste in the production, leading to a potential compromise on the depth and authenticity of the story. For Penn, the devil was indeed in the details, and he found himself yearning for a more in-depth exploration of his character and the narrative. The discord didn't end with creative differences, though. It extended to the realm of politics. Sean Penn and Clint Eastwood held contrasting views, particularly on two polarizing topics. The Iraq War and Gay Right. Penn, an outspoken advocate for various social and political causes, found himself in stark disagreement with Eastwood's stance on these issues. Sean Penn's portrayal of Harvey Milk in Milk went on to earn him accolades. However, the collaboration with Clint Eastwood was marked by friction, both artistic and ideological. These tensions serve as a reminder that even within the realm of cinema, the clash of personalities and principles can significantly impact the creative process and the dynamics between actors and directors. Number 8. Michael Moore In the realm of contrasting viewpoints and simmering disputes, a rather heated exchange transpired in 2014 when the controversial documentary director Michael Moore took to Facebook to express his critical stance on snipers coinciding with the release of Clint Eastwood's film, American Sniper. Moore's perspective was deeply personal, as he had lost a family member to a sniper in World War II. His sentiment was clear. He believed that the movie glorified snipers in a manner he found inappropriate. Michael Moore, known for his provocative and polarizing documentaries like Fahrenheit 9-11 and Bowling for Columbine, did not hold back in expressing his disdain for the film. In a tweet, he went so far as to label snipers as cowards. This already contentious situation took an even more dramatic turn when rumors circulated about a confrontation at the National Board of Review Awards dinner. Both Eastwood and Moore were supposedly present at the event, and it was Eastwood's turn to speak. 
What followed was a moment of palpable tension, as Clint Eastwood coldly declared that if Michael Moore were ever to set foot in his home for an interview, he would shoot him. The audience's response was a mixture of astonishment and nervous laughter, unsure whether Eastwood was making an offhand comment or a genuine threat. Though Clint Eastwood later vehemently denied making the threat to shoot Michael Moore, he did not mince words in conveying his lack of regard for the director. The clash between these two prominent figures within the film industry showcased the volatile nature of creative differences, personal history, and the powerful influence of media. It remains a striking episode in the annals of Hollywood history. Number 7. Bradley Cooper Acclaimed actors like Bradley Cooper, known for his roles in films like The Hangover and A Star is Born, have also found themselves at odds with the vision of a director like Eastwood. Their creative differences came to the forefront during their collaboration on the film American Sniper, where Cooper took on the challenging role of Chris Kyle, the renowned Navy SEAL. The crux of the matter lay in Bradley Cooper's dissatisfaction with Clint Eastwood's approach to editing and cutting the film. Cooper believed that essential scenes and crucial details were left on the cutting room floor, resulting in a film that, in his view, failed to capture the full depth and complexity of the story. This friction underscored the critical role of the editing process in filmmaking, a phase where the narrative's ultimate shape is determined. Cooper's disquiet didn't stop at the editing room, too. It extended to his perception of the recognition and credit he received for his performance and dedication to the production. He felt that Eastwood did not adequately acknowledge his contributions and the significance of his role in bringing the character of Chris Kyle to life. This dimension of their discord highlights the importance of acknowledgement and appreciation in collaborative endeavors, especially in the world of cinema. In the aftermath of these clashes, Bradley Cooper also made a resolute declaration to not consider working with Clint Eastwood again unless he had more creative control. This demand reflected his desire for a more prominent role in shaping the artistic aspects of the project, a creative autonomy that actors sometimes seek as they strive to bring their vision to the screen. While American Sniper went on to receive critical acclaim and commercial success, the behind-the-scenes conflicts between Cooper and Eastwood shows that even seasoned professionals, such as Bradley Cooper and Clint Eastwood, can experience differences in their creative perspectives, leading to discussions about the creative process, recognition, and artistic control. Number 6. Gene Hackman the backdrop for the clash between Gene Hackman and Clint Eastwood was their joint venture in Unforgiven, a film directed by Clint Eastwood, who also co-starred alongside Hackman. The core of the dispute lay in Gene Hackman's vexation with Eastwood's unconventional and easygoing approach to filmmaking. Eastwood is known for his laid-back and relaxed demeanor on set a style that often contrasts sharply with the intensity and meticulousness often associated with the acting profession. Additionally, Eastwood liked playing jazz music on set, adding to the sense of informality that grated on Hackman's nerves. For Hackman, who approached his craft with a high degree of seriousness and dedication, Eastwood's mannerisms felt insufficiently professional. He perceived a lack of respect for the art of acting and the vision that actors bring to their roles. The tensions that brewed in their working relationship brought into sharp focus the multifaceted nature of filmmaking, where different actors and directors may have varying interpretations of professionalism and the artistic process. Moreover, Hackman's grievances extended to the aftermath of their collaboration. He harbored resentment toward Eastwood for what he perceived as an appropriation of credit for the film's success and accolades. In the wake of their tumultuous collaboration on Unforgiven, it became clear that Gene Hackman and Clint Eastwood had experienced a chaotic working relationship. Before we continue, let's have today's subscribers pick. We can clearly see the compilation of the actors in this image. Truly, we have discussed many of them and how their interests clashed with Clint Eastwood's ideals. However, we are yet to find what discourse might have occurred between the actress, Barbara Eden, and Eastwood. The blonde lady is an American actress best known for her iconic role as Jeannie in the popular 1960s television series, I Dream of Jeannie. Though she has had a successful career, she has also faced personal challenges. Her enduring charm and talent have indeed left a lasting impact on the entertainment industry. Though they both work in the filmmaking industry, we still haven't discovered what issue she might have had with Eastwood. However, rumors suggest she and the icon may not be on good terms. If you know any backstory concerning these two legends, share it with us in the comment section below. Number 5. 
Spike Lee. Even celebrated figures like Spike Lee and Clint Eastwood are not immune to disputes and disagreements. The origins of their feud can be traced back to Eastwood's hiring choices for his two World War II films, Letters from Iwo Jima and Flags of Our Fathers, both of which were released in 2006. Spike Lee's contention revolved around what he saw as a lack of accurate portrayal of the diverse forces that heroically fought in those battles. He vocalized his concerns, asserting that Eastwood's films did not sufficiently represent the diversity of the soldiers who participated in the battles. This ignited a public exchange of words between the two prominent directors. Eastwood, known for his no-nonsense approach, responded by telling Lee to shut his face. The retort was a reflection of Eastwood's inclination toward plain speaking. Spike Lee, in turn, countered Eastwood's comments by emphasizing their positions in the film industry. He made it clear that Clint was not his father, and they were not on a plantation, thereby asserting their autonomy and independence. Amid this public dispute, Spike Lee also remarked that Eastwood, despite being a great director, came across as an angry old man in the exchange. As time passed, reports emerged that the two renowned directors had managed to put their differences aside and had since cultivated a more amicable relationship. The feud that once captured headlines now serves as a reminder of the complexities and dynamics that can unfold between prominent figures in the film world. It's a testament to the enduring nature of creative partnerships, as even those who engage in public disputes may find common ground and reconciliation, much like the arcs of collaboration and conflict that have marked the histories of Hollywood and its iconic figures. Number 4. Meryl Streep. Streep's frustration in the course of her collaboration with Clint Eastwood can be attributed to several factors. Firstly, she was disheartened by Eastwood's cold and distant demeanor. The lack of warmth and connection left her feeling like Eastwood had erected emotional barriers, making it difficult to foster a sense of camaraderie on set. In the world of acting, where chemistry and rapport are often essential ingredients for a successful performance, this emotional disconnect weighed heavily on Streep. Another aspect that heightened Streep's dismay was Eastwood's unwavering commitment to using natural lighting and minimal makeup. While this approach aligned with Eastwood's preferences as a filmmaker, it clashed with Streep's accustomed experience as an actress. The absence of makeup and the reliance on natural light contributed to Streep's perception that Eastwood's style of filmmaking was less attuned to the traditional standards of the industry. Her feelings of frustration extended further as she believed that Eastwood displayed a lack of interest in her as both a person and an actress. This sense of disinterest, in her view, hindered the development of a collaborative and creatively satisfying working relationship. Streep, celebrated for her unparalleled talent and versatility, desired an environment that valued her input and recognized her contribution to the project. Additionally, she found some of Eastwood's jokes and comments to be sexist and offensive. Her sensitivity to issues of gender equality and respect amplified her discontent with the on-set atmosphere. The exchange of words and interactions that unfolded during the filming process left an indelible imprint on her perspective of the director and the overall experience. Meryl Streep's candid revelations about her experience during the collaboration collaboration for the film The Bridges of Madison County provide valuable insights into the intricate interplay between actors and directors, emphasizing the importance of mutual respect and communication in the pursuit of cinematic excellence. Number 3. Army Hammer. In the making of Hoover, Army Hammer was another actor who found Clint Eastwood's approach to filming rather unconventional. Eastwood's style involved shooting a scene just once and then swiftly moving on to the next. For Hammer, this was so unusual that he initially mistook the take as a rehearsal. To his surprise, Eastwood decided to use that initial take and proceeded with the production. This left Hammer flustered as he had clung to his script throughout the scene, assuming there would be additional takes for refinement. In his confusion, he explained the situation to Eastwood. Eastwood responded succinctly and firmly, stating that he would edit the script out. This intriguing anecdote again reflects the efficiency and decisiveness that Eastwood brings to his filmmaking process. Process. While many directors opt for multiple takes to capture various nuances, Eastwood's unique method favors spontaneity and simplicity. This approach, while unusual to some, has become a defining characteristic of his directorial style. Army Hammer's experience offers a glimpse into the unconventional aspects of filmmaking and the unique methodologies that can shape a project. 
In the grand tapestry of cinema, where diverse approaches and creative idiosyncrasies coexist, each director, like Clint Eastwood, brings their own distinct vision to the screen, making every production a distinctive and memorable venture. Number 2. Charlize Theron This was the Oscar-winning actress known for her roles in films like Monster and Mad Max Fury Road. The focal point of Charlize Theron's clash with Eastwood was his film Million Dollar Baby and Theron's reported decision to decline a role in it. The heart of the matter, as per reports, was Theron's reluctance to work with Eastwood, grounded in her perception of him as being old-fashioned, sexist, and conservative. These attributes, in her eyes, did not align with her own artistic and philosophical values. Theron's apprehensions extended beyond the creative realm and seeped into the political arena Arena. She openly disagreed with Eastwood's views, particularly on contentious issues like gun control and immigration. These ideological disparities reinforced her decision to distance herself from Eastwood's project, as she opted for a path that aligned more closely with her own beliefs and preferences. Her sentiments reflect the intricate intersection of art and ideology in Hollywood. The clash of personalities and principles within the film industry is not uncommon, with actors and directors often navigating diverse perspectives and political stances. The rift between Charlize Theron and Clint Eastwood exemplifies the dynamics that can shape creative collaborations. Million Dollar Baby went on to become a critically acclaimed film, but the behind-the-scenes complexities are a firm reminder of the multifaceted nature of filmmaking. Number 1. Flea from Red Hot Chili Pepper Flea the bassist of the Red Hot Chili Pepper once found himself at odds with Eastwood over remarks the actor-director made regarding political correctness in the entertainment industry. Flea perceived Eastwood's comments as inconsiderate, sparking a public exchange of words. This incident is a striking illustration of the diversity of perspectives that coexist within the world of entertainment. Where the line between art and politics can be a fine one. It's worth noting that Clint Eastwood's involvement in politics extends beyond his public statements, too. The multifaceted artist took on the role of a town mayor, serving for two years. It's a curious fact that adds an extra layer to his public image, offering a glimpse into the man behind the iconic characters he's portrayed on screen. While Eastwood's foray into politics might bring to mind the archetypal image of an older individual admonishing unwanted visitors, his political career offers more depth than meets the eye. The world of entertainment, like any other, is characterized by a diversity of viewpoints and experiences. Celebrities, much like the characters they bring to life on screen, have their own beliefs and convictions, sometimes leading to spirited debates and disagreements. Clint Eastwood's political journey, from his conservative stance to his mayoral role, exemplifies the rich tapestry of perspectives that shape the intricate world of show business.